What's up, my fellow geeks? Today we're gonna take a look at another ancient board game that's a lot of fun and easy to make at home. This is Bull, and I'm just gonna read you the Wikipedia entry so you have a better idea of what you're looking at. Bull, also called Bullock or Pollock, is a running fight board game originating in Mesoamerica and is known particularly among several of the Maya peoples of Belize and Guatemalan highlands. It is uncertain whether this game dates back to the pre-Columbian Mayan civilization or whether it developed in the post-colonial era after the arrival of the Spanish conquistadors. This is the simple board I constructed at home. All it is is a piece of foam core with a printed design glued on top. Makes for a sturdy yet lightweight board. I've seen these go anywhere from nine to 13 rows or columns. Mine here is 13, which makes for a slightly longer game. You're going to need two sets of playing pieces, five, six, or seven. My game is designed for six versus six. I went on Amazon and bought a bunch of checkers pieces. Just make sure whatever you're using is able to stack on top of one another fairly easily. Last thing you're gonna need are some throwing sticks and this determines what score or movement you get on each turn. I just used some popsicle sticks which I painted a design on one side and left blank on the other side. You could also use four coins or four six-sided dice. Just make sure the math works out the same so half of the sides have a point and half of the sides do not. Now that you know what you need to make your own board, let's take a look at the rules. The game begins with each player having all of their pieces or warriors on their home base on each side of the board. The object of the game is to move your warriors out onto the battlefield, capture your opponent's warriors and bring them back to your home base. For each piece that you capture of your opponents is worth one point. Players go back and forth taking turns throwing the movement sticks, and then moving their pieces accordingly. Let's take a look at the movement sticks now. When you throw them, you get one movement for each point. This would be a score of two. Obviously, this would be a score of one, this would be a score of three, and this would be a score of four. In this game, you can't roll a zero, so if you throw all points down, that is actually a score of five. On your turn, you can only move one piece, so you cannot subdivide your roll. If I score four, I can't move two pieces, two spaces, I have to move one piece, four spaces. Each row or column can only be occupied by one warrior or piece at a time. The only exception to this is when you're capturing an opponent's piece. So if I roll a score of three, I can move this piece, one, two, three, and capture my opponent's piece landing on top of him. This is now controlled by me, not by my opponent. Your pieces or warriors start off moving one direction towards your opponent's home base. They will change direction for one of two reasons. Either you will capture your opponent's piece and now you're moving backwards, or you are close to your opponent's home base Say I'm here and I roll a three, well, I can't go onto their home base, so I'm gonna change direction going one, two, three. Now you need to remember that this piece is moving backwards. Pieces can capture your opponent moving backwards, so if he rolls a two moving backwards, I've got him. If by chance your piece makes it all the way to your opponent's home base, changes direction, and comes all the way back, well, it just starts again from the home base. When you capture an opponent's piece, and start moving backwards. Getting him to your home base means you score a point and your piece goes back on the board to continue the battle. There is no limit to how many captures a piece or warrior can make and players could go back and forth making captures. I'm the white player, my opponent's the black player. This guy, I could roll a two and capture. My opponent could roll a three and capture. I could roll a five, one, two, three, four, five, and capture. Now we've got a tall stack there of many points. I'm in control of this stack. Upon moving backwards, I could capture my opponent's two pieces and effectively gaining me lots of points. When bringing a captured piece back to your home base, 
you do not need to roll exact numbers. So I have a captured piece here. As long as I roll a two or higher, I get the point and bring my warrior back to home base. If there are no legal moves, you lose your turn. So if I roll a score of two, I can't move this guy back two because I can't have two people on one row. I can't move this guy forward two and I can't move one from my home base out. I lose my turn. The game is over when one player has no pieces left on the board they can move. Each player would then count their points and see who was the winner. This game can end in a tie, at which point you'd have to play again. I love this game because you don't know who's gonna win right until the very end. Even if I'm losing really badly, I only have one warrior left, my opponent has all six. It is possible for this one guy to wipe out my opponent and win the game, although not very likely. Like any ancient board game, you're going to see lots of variations to the rules. Simply put, it's hard to find documentation and evidence for exactly how these games were played when first invented. The rules that I just explained to you seem to make the most sense and play the most smooth after playing it a bunch of times. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.